Welcome to Food You. We're your host. I'm Christina. And I'm Gabe. You might notice that our set has changed a little bit. We are at the Union County Agricultural Center in Monroe, North Carolina, just down the road from Wingate. And we're in the demonstration kitchen for the Union County Cooperative Extension, and we're very grateful they've allowed us to be here. Yes. So what are we making today? Today we are going to make different types of sushi. Sushi may be a scary word for most people when it comes to uh, maybe eating sushi or trying sushi for the first time, but today we're going to hopefully dispel some of the myths around what sushi is and show you how it can be uh, approachable and maybe you can make some in your own home. It sounds great. I remember the first time you and I ever went out to eat sushi and I was terrified. I don't like anything from the ocean. I don't like seafood. Gabe was like, try some with some shrimp or some cooked salmon. It's okay. And the idea just totally grossed me out. But through making some ourselves and learning how to make it, I learned that you don't have to use seafood. It doesn't have to be raw, even if you do like seafood. And if you're not a fan of the traditional nori wrappers, which is seaweed that goes around sushi, you can also find soy wrappers at the grocery store and they carry these at the local grocery stores in Monroe even. So they're not hard to find. They're a couple dollars a packet and they take away all that fishy taste from the sushi, which I love. So sushi doesn't automatically have to mean raw fish or raw anything. Sushi is really a term that describes the type of rice that's used, a sticky rice. Um, and just uh, sushi means small servings of this rice and garnished with some sort of meat or vegetables. Uh, traditionally, it's seafood. Uh, that's because sushi started in Japan. And so for thousands of years, that tradition has carried on. But now people make sushi with all sorts of things. So that's what we're going to try to demonstrate today. So we're going to make four rolls for you today. We're going to start by making the avocado roll with the soy wrapper. And we'll use rice, which is mixed with two tablespoons of rice vinegar. And that helps make it sticky. And all it is is the soy wrapper, the rice, and an avocado. Pretty yeah. easy. So if you want to, would you mind cutting this avocado for me? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go ahead and start prepping our soy paper. And I'll show you how to do that. So when you're working with these papers, they're very delicate. You want to put them on a dry surface so that they don't disintegrate. And you want to keep a little bowl of water nearby to dip your fingers in to keep the sticky rice from sticking to your fingers. That was a good tip you taught me earlier, Gabe. And you want to get about a half a cup of rice. I like to start with about a quarter cup and push it down onto the paper, wetting your fingers as you go. And this works for both the soy paper and the nori as well. And again, the nori is the seafood paper. What you want to do is cover this about two thirds so that you can still put some filling in it. I'm just going to pat this down. Gabe, do you have a favorite kind of sushi roll? Probably my favorite would be a spicy tuna roll. It's pretty, pretty standard. and I've, I'm, I think I'm going to make one of those later in this episode. That sounds good. I'm pretty good at picking out avocados. Nice. You want to pick one that's soft to the touch and gives a little bit. It may feel, um, it may feel too soft, but a good soft one, if you're going to eat it right away, is, is what you want to find. Perfect. It looks good. And if you'll cut that in kind of square slices. Okay. That soy wrapper looks good. What are those little dots again? In there the are sesame seeds. Um, baked into the soy wrapper. Mm. All right. We've got this about two thirds up. I'm going to give my hands a rinse here. One thing to remember is just to have fun with this. We, we are obviously not um, knife experts like a, a trained sushi chef would be. So just have fun with it. Be creative and Remember, you can, you can do this any way you want to. You don't have to go by the book. It's true. So once you put rice on your nori or your soy wrapper, you want to get a bamboo mat. And you can find these at any Asian market or world market, which is a store up the street. They're only a couple dollars a piece. And you want to wrap this in saran wrap to keep the sticky rice from sticking to it. So you lay this down. You transfer your wrapper to it. And I'll show you what we're going to do with this here. So you want to start by putting your avocado or your filling in this empty space right here by the rice. 
So can I grab a couple mm -hmm. pieces? Let's see. And we're going to fill this one up with a generous amount of avocado since it's the only thing going in this one. That's a good point. If you start to put a whole lot of filling into the roll, when it's time to roll it up, your roll is going to be really big and sort of out of control. So try to minimize the amount of ingredients that you put in the middle. I like to think of this, it's almost like a Japanese burrito. Mm. Like, you want to put a lot of stuff in it and it's really good, but you don't want to overstuff it so that it breaks. Sure. Okay, so now that my avocado is in place, I'm going to begin by tucking this into the soy wrapper over it. And we're going to use the bamboo mat. Which you've covered in plastic wrap. Right. Did we talk about that? We did. Okay. That's fine. Um, we're going to begin by using the bamboo mat to help squeeze it. So you want to roll it around, give it a squeeze, give it another turn, and give it a squeeze, and keep turning it and squeezing it tightly with the bamboo mat so that it stays in one piece. Mm -hmm. You don't want your sushi to fall apart on you, so you want to make sure that you squeeze the roll tightly. Yeah, just keep it tight the whole time you're going through. There we go. And it'll kind of, as you do that, it naturally sort of fits into a, it almost looks like a square shape as the roll rolls up more than a circle. Mm-hmm. And it's natural for some things to squeeze out the side a little bit like this when you're making it. All right, that looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to set this on my cutting board. And I'm going to grab, will you grab a, grab a what? Grab a plate for me. Thank you. And I'm going to wash this. OK, you got a knife. Good. <laughs> and I'm going to cut this up. And we're going to cut it in about one inch pieces. It's important to have as sharp a knife as you can find because uh, if you don't have a sharp knife, it'll smush the roll and it's just harder to cut and it'll tear up and you'll end up eating your sushi roll like a burrito. That's so a good point. Make sure you have a sharp knife if you can get your hands on one. And you want to use a straight edge. You don't want to use a serrated knife. Careful. Don't cut yourself. Okay. <laughs> I'll be careful. All right. One inch pieces gives us about eight pieces of sushi. So, put this on the plate so you can see it. You can see the soy wrapper on the outside and the rice and the avocado in the middle. And again, there's, nothing, there's no meat in here. It's just the avocado, rice, soy wrapper, sesame seed, very clean, very healthy sushi roll. That's a good point. This is one of my favorites, and you serve it with some wasabi mm -hmm. and soy sauce, and you're ready to go. So we're going to set this aside while we move on to our next roll. Let's see, what are we making next? So you notice that first roll had the soy paper on the outside of the roll. Now we're going to make a roll called an inside-out maki roll. So this will have rice on the outside, and the paper will be rolled up on the inside. And we're going to use just veggies in this, and we're going to take one more step towards the traditional sushi by using nori, which is the seaweed paper to wrap it in. But it's still just veggies in the filling. And all of this stuff, all these, uh, the sushi paper and the condiments that we'll use can all be found on the international aisle at most grocery stores. Okay, so with the veggie roll, we're going to use three different kinds of veggies. We're going to use avocado, cucumber, and carrots. Okay. Actually, let's throw in some asparagus, too. You want to do four? Yeah. Okay. The first thing we're going to do with the inside-out roll is carefully flip this mm. rice-covered paper over so that the rice is on the plastic paper on your bamboo mat. And then we're still going to fill it on the blank part that has no rice on it. So we're still going to put your filling right here before we wrap it. So I'm going to begin with some avocado. Now, I'm confused. Why can't we, just, why can't we have rice all the way on this piece, too, right here? By only putting rice on two-thirds to three-quarters of the paper, it allows us to roll it without making the roll so fat that you can't eat it in one bite. Gotcha. So the fatter the roll, the harder it is to eat. Speaking of fat rolls, since we're using <laughs> one, two, three, four vegetables, we need to be extra careful we don't overstuff it, right? Yes. Good point. I'll put that one back. <laughs> right. And I'll eat it. And then, so on top of the avocado, we'll put one long piece of cucumber. And this is a cucumber that we've just cut in half, seeded, and then cut into long strips. And then we've done the same thing with carrots. We've cut them thinly. And we'll put a few of those here. Let's see. Maybe, will you put one more cucumber? 
Or yeah. are we good? Or, uh, um, it doesn't yeah. matter. Because we'll do we still have asparagus to go. Here we go. And we'll put a couple pieces of asparagus in here. The asparagus, <clears throat> before, before we started this, I broke off the tips of the asparagus, so about that much was on the end of it. And it's just kind of tough, uh, the stalk there, and so it snaps off at a natural point about an inch from the bottom. And that's a good thing to remember anytime you're cooking asparagus. Once you snap it at that natural point, then it'll be tender and it won't be tough when you're eating it. Now you may already be able to tell the roll that we made before didn't have very much, it looks pretty, but it didn't have very much color in it. But this one is going to look much different with the orange and the deeper greens. It's true. So much like we rolled the regular maki roll, the inside, maki roll. <laughs> the, I just so like crazy. saying that. The inside out one, we're going to start the same way. And we're going to start by using our bamboo mat to roll this over. So we'll, the most important part is to get this first roll tight. Mm -hmm. So we're going to wrap that around it and squeeze and then move it a little bit more and squeeze. Make sure you get it all the way down and apply even pressure so that it, it isn't half tight on the roll. Yeah, I remember using a bamboo mat and without the plastic wrap and the rice got all stuck in the cracks and I just threw the mat away. Yeah, it was a pain to clean. But if, you, if that happens to you, just wait on it to dry, the rice to dry, and then the the grains pop out pretty easily. That looks pretty cool mm -hmm. with the rice on the outside. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to cut it in one inch pieces. Now see that knife is not Ooh. as sharp as the other one and it's, see how it squishes a little bit? Oh, you're right. But that's fine. That one, I mean, I'll still eat that. But then, <laughs> and it's not so bad right there, it'll still work. Okay. Hmm. And what's more? And <laughs> Are you eating before we're done? Get my hands a rinse, and if you'll bring the plate over. Show them the inside. It's a lot more colorful than the other ones were, so we'll just plate this up right next to it. That looks great. Mm -hmm. You can see the cucumber, and the asparagus, and the carrot, and the avocado. I love avocado and sushi. It makes it so creamy. It almost has like a cream cheese texture. Mm -hmm. And I like it. The avocado tastes different and feels different when it's room temperature as opposed to refrigerated. That's true. When it's room temperature, it's much more, it just feels more rich and creamy like Christina was saying. It's nice, it's nice in the sushi roll. All right, what are you going to be making for us, Gabe? So I'm going to take it another step and we're gonna add some meat, but we're not gonna add fish or raw fish. We're gonna add something that most people are comfortable eating, and that is turkey. What? I just bought some turkey at the grocery store, like sandwich slices, and so we're gonna cut that up and use that in our sushi roll. So, uh, some adding some meat protein, but not quite the raw fish that everybody seems to be a little hesitant of. That sounds good. Can we put some avocado with it? Yes, we're also going to put carrot and probably some cucumber too. Awesome. So while you're doing that, I'm going to prep one more nori for you for your tuna roll, okay? Okay, thank you. So I'm going to start with the vegetables. Put some carrots in there. there cucumber. <laughs> um, avocado. Avocado is really delicate, and so to keep it from smushing all over the place, which you can see happening here on the cutting board, just handle it very lightly. Now I'm going to go grab my turkey. And again, this is just sandwich slices from the deli counter at the grocery store. For this roll, I'm going to grab uh, maybe two pieces, two slices. It's all again. It's all up to you. Be creative and just use what you like. I've got a turkey slice out here, and I think what I'm going to do is just lay it out, 
And much like I'll do in a minute when I roll my sushi roll, I'm just going to roll this turkey up, um, maybe in a little roll here, and then just transfer that straight over to the sushi roll, like so. Now, that's a little thick. Maybe you want to do half a slice and roll it up, uh, but I think we'll still be able to, to make this roll tight. That looks great. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm going to flip this around just so I can have more leverage on the start here. And again, this, the uh, nori will be on the outside of the roll, so this is a traditional maki roll. So I'm going to bring this first piece over here and get it real tight. And maki literally just means cut sushi. Hmm. Good to know. So. Yeah, there are all different types of sushi. There are different types of rolls. There are um, sometimes it's served in a, in a cone of paper, um, like you can see on this here. Um, there are the other types called nigri or sashimi, and so it's just a piece of meat on top of a piece of rice. But we're just going to start with the basics here. So I'm getting this real tight and ready to go. I'm going to roll this over. Again, smushing it each time you roll it over. It looks perfect. Thank you. <laughs> I have another piece of nori ready for you when you're ready to do your tuna roll, spicy tuna roll. Thank you. You are welcome. And one thing we love to eat with sushi, and you find it a lot in restaurants, is miso soup. You're so what? Miso soup. Oh, miso. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> miso soup. Yes. Anyways, miso soup is soup made from soybean paste, and you can find it, again, at your local grocery store. You can find the paste in a bottle like this, and you just mix it with hot water on the stove, and I like to add some scallions. You can add some tofu as well, but I think I'm going to make a little bit of this while you're doing those rolls to go with our sushi. What do you think? That sounds good to me. Okay. Now, when I cut this roll, let me just clean it off here a little bit. got some rice around. I'm gonna, first thing I'm going to do is clean up this end right here so it's not stuff's not poking out like that. And again, this knife could be a lot sharper. Um, set that over here. And then just to make it look a little bit different as you present it, so one thing you can do is cut it sort of at an angle on a bias like that. And I'll, oh, this is beautiful. still useful, but I'll just set that over here for now. But yeah, cut it at an angle and it just looks a little bit different. That looks awesome. And you can see in the roll you've got your turkey, vegetables, um, avocado, cucumber, and carrot in there. And we'll plate this in just a second. So Christina, that's just the paste and water, right? It is. I'm going to do four cups of water to four tablespoons of soybean paste or miso paste. Great. So I'm going to get this boiling. Here we go. And I'll plate that up for you. I'm not, I'm not, yeah, just use that one, but the rest of them aren't... Um, Pretty. They're not pretty? No. <laughs> okay. That looks great. And again, we washed our hands, don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'll just take that. Okay. I'm going to put this water on to boil for the miso soup. Okay. And I'm going to go catch a fish to use for my next sushi roll. <laughs> and we'll take a short break and be right back. <laughs> Your extraordinary future begins at Wingate University with more than 35 undergraduate majors and graduate and professional programs in the health sciences, business, and education. Wingate University's enrollment has mushroomed and construction has skyrocketed in the past two decades. And Wingate is the sixth best value in the South, according to U.S. News & World Report. Most importantly, Wingate graduates get jobs that are working all over the Carolinas and the U.S. Major in a great life at Wingate University. We're back. 
My water's almost boiling and Gabe's back from fishing. <laughs> I went she straight to the grocery store and <laughs> caught a fish. Nice. It does say wild caught. Yes, it's wild caught and it's also previously frozen. You want to make sure that if you're using fish for sushi that it's been previously frozen um, for safety concerns just to make sure that there are no parasites in the meat. Um, so just look for uh, previously frozen fish steaks. Yeah, and the label on that says wild caught frozen, so you know it's been frozen before and it's safe to use. Yeah. Also remember that you can watch this, epi uh, this episode of Food You as many times as you want to on YouTube and you can also follow us on Facebook. All right, it looks like your water is boiling and you're putting in the miso paste. Boiling, I've got four cups of water and I'm doing four tablespoons and I'm eyeballing that, this tablespoons by giving it a, a good glug. Okay. <laughs> Um, I think you'll need these onions in a minute, so I'll just bring those Thank you. over there. All right. So how do you cut the tuna to go in here? Do you cut um, it in like big chunks or do you cut it in strips? It's totally up to the person. Um, <clears throat> I think I'm going to cut mine in just sort of slices. Okay. Yep. I'm just going to rinse mine off. Okay. Will you grab me a paper towel, please? Sure. There you go. Thank you. And there's a clean knife for you. Thanks. Okay, um, so when you pick tuna, you're looking for um, sort of a dark red as opposed to a lighter color. Um, so you can cut your fish however you want to. I'm just going to cut sort of thin slices here. And um, I'll line it up inside my roll. That doesn't look at all like the tuna fish I grew up eating out of a can. Yeah, yeah this is not cooked for one thing and it's more fresh than that would be. Chicken of the sea, like it's Jessica true. Simpson said. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> I think if I had seen that when I was a kid maybe I would like seafood to this day instead of that tuna noodle casserole we all grew up on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm going to put in, I don't know, asparagus, just put it right on there. And sushi's one of those things, you make it yours. If you don't like asparagus, you don't have to put it in there. If you don't like carrots, you don't have to put it in there. You can use any vegetable. You could use zucchini or squash. Um, just about any vegetable does. Yes. All right. And then, just to make this a spicy tuna roll, I'm going to add a little bit of hot sauce. You can use uh, a sriracha garlic chili paste, that's what this is, and just add as much as you want to throughout your roll. Some, most of the times for a spicy tuna roll it's uh, something, it's a mixture that's ground up with, with the tuna and hot sauce and other things, but we're just going to do it this way. Fresh is the best. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to get ready to roll up my spicy tuna roll here. Maki roll. Spicy tuna maki roll. <laughs> and I'm just going to start with my first one here. It's got to be really good and tight. I'm just going to tuck all my goodies in there. You're going to be a pro at this by the time we're done. Yeah. All right, while you're doing that, I'm going to put the scallions into the miso soup. And that will be ready to go in just a couple minutes. Mm, soup smells good. There we go. And the scallions bring a little bit of green light to the murky soup. It looks kind of like chicken broth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tasty. Miso soup is tasty. I think you definitely win for most beautiful sushi rolls. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You were very helpful with the rice and everything. Thank you. Okay. Here, I'll get that mat out of your way. Thank you. Yep. So I'm going to cut this last roll up. How should I cut it? Just this. I like the way you cut it on the bias. Okay, I'll do that I think it looks again. really nice. So I'm going to clean this edge off here. 
Yeah, I need to sharpen my knives, but that's okay. Beautiful. These are big bites, but it'll be good. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you for doing that. And again, you can put anything you want to in your sushi roll. You can put beef, you can put chicken, you can put shrimp. Don't be afraid of sushi. Make it your own and have fun with it. Yeah, I even made sushi roll one night out of Chick-fil-A chicken breast in a soy wrapper. Mm -hmm. So, And it was delicious. So if you can make that, you can make it out of anything. Seriously. Okay. So while I dish up some of the soup, I think... Sushi is traditionally served with a little bit of wasabi paste and a little bit of pickled ginger. Do you want to put a little bit of that on the plate for us here? And I'll serve up the soup and then we'll be ready to eat. Okay. Okay. Well, that's smart to use the chopsticks to get the ginger out. That way the ginger, pickled ginger comes in like a, almost like pickle juice. And that way you don't have to drain it. So the miso soup, we brought the water to a boil, once again added the soybean paste or the miso paste, and then we just whisked it, and it's ready to go. You don't have to let it cook for any certain amount of time. You just want that water to be hot when you add the paste. And then I just added the onions and let them sit for probably two or three minutes just so they could get a little bit tender. So, and there's our soup. And I'm gonna finish putting everything together and we'll be right back to show you our final products. Planning your next step in life? Come complete your education in a dynamic, caring environment at Wingate University. Enrollment and construction have skyrocketed in the past two decades as students pursue challenging and rewarding degrees in fields like the health sciences, business, and education. U.S. News & World Report has named Wingate University the sixth best value in the South. Visit one of our three great campuses, Wingate, North Carolina, Hendersonville, or Charlotte, or check us out at wingate.edu. Major in a great life at Wingate University. All right, we're back and I'm putting the final touches on my plate here, putting the pickled ginger on here. Mm -hmm. um, do you know why they serve pickled ginger with sushi? I wanna say it serves as a palate cleanser between bites. That's so, what I've always heard. But. Yeah, when things are super spicy, it kinda cleanses all the other flavors in your mouth and you can, it cools your mouth off even though it's a little bit spicy and you can enjoy your next bite. Mm -hmm. We'll have to Google it. Sounds good. <laughs> you can Google everything. All right, so there is my plate. So I've got the first roll we made, the avocado roll and the soybean wrappers, and then I've got the inside out veggie roll that we made with Nori, mm -hmm. and then we graduated. Well, we just <laughs> added some meat. Uh, they're, both, they're both really good. We just added some turkey in here, and then our tuna and hot sauce in here to make it a little different, but they're all very good, and just, again, make it to suit your taste and have fun with it. Sounds good, and we've got your chopsticks and your chopstick rest that you picked up in China last year. Right. That's pretty cool. And miso soup, yep. and traditional spoon here. And we are ready to eat. Mm -hmm. Again, watch us on YouTube and follow us on Facebook, and we'll see you next time on Food You. Yes.